amount of Lovecraft fiction not written by Lovecraft is vast. God damn vast. If you go looking for Lovecraftian stories set in the mythos, you're gonna find so many books that it gets kinda overwhelming. Like which ones do you buy, right? They can't all be of good quality, and trust me, they aren't. A lot of them have that terrible tendency to just think that all you need to make a Lovecraftian story Lovecraftian is to add tentacles or to name drop characters or locations from Lovecraft's inv own inventions. I've browsed through quite a few anthologies but own only a few of them because of this reason. This one I was very lucky to stumble upon. I was on holiday in the Philippines and I was in this huge bookstore in Manila. Finding it felt like one of Lovecraft's protagonists who stumble upon some abhorrent tome of knowledge tucked away in some hidden bookstore in a faraway land. Anyway, this anthology is the best Lovecraftian anthology by far I have ever seen and that's just for two reasons. Let me know if any of these names are familiar to you. Clark Ashton Smith, Robert E. Howard, Frank Belknap Long, August Derleth, Robert Bloch, Fritz Leiber. If they do sound familiar, it's because these guys are the writers that were part of the Lovecraft circle. These are the guys who actually corresponded with Lovecraft when he was still alive and traded ideas and information with him. These were basically his friends. So if Lovecraft is the founder of Cosmic Horror, then these are his acolytes. Each of these authors went on to have respectable careers themselves and are worth looking at for that reason alone. When you see these names, it's almost a guarantee of quality. There are 22 stories in this book, but these guys make up the bulk of the contributions, which is a good thing. Furthermore, you will also see names such as Ramsey Campbell, Henry Kuttner, and Brian Lumley, who are regulars in most Lovecraftian anthologies. There's also a Colin Wilson story as well. I don't know him, but I somehow recall him being a respected writer. Also, there's a couple Lovecraft stories in there, and there's a Stephen King story for some reason, but who cares about that, right? I'm a bit of an asshole when it comes to what counts as canon in the mythos and what isn't. This is why I dislike August Derleth and his attempts to inject this good evil duality into the mythos. But the thing with Lovecraft is that he never really intended to make a structured mythos like uh, in the DC universe or Marvel universe. A lot of his friends took this opportunity to develop their own literary creations and Lovecraft sometimes incorporated these into his fiction, thus in my view making them canon. For example, Robert Bloch created the tome called De Vermis Mysteris by himself, but Lovecraft later incorporated it into his own stories. In this book you will find many stories which created many of the creatures, forbidden tomes, locations which have become part of the Cthulhu mythos over time. Not only that, but many of these stories flesh out the monsters, cults and locations that Lovecraft himself created. Here are some examples. In The Shambler from the Stars by Robert Bloch, the creature known as the Star Vampire is introduced. In The Shadow from the Steeple, also by Bloch, the story arc created by Lovecraft in The Haunter of the Dark is furthered and built up on upon like it was a sequel or something, and Njal Athetep makes one of his most prominent appearances in the story. It's interesting to note that in each of their stories, Lovecraft and Bloch made the protagonist of their stories a fictionalized version of the other writer. It just goes to show how close of friends these two were. The Blackstone by Robert E. Howard introduces another tome commonly seen in the mythos called the Unausprechlichen Kulten von, von Junst. It also features what I think was Tsothogwa, although not mentioned by name, and this was a creature created by Clark Ashton Smith. So now we have Clark Ashton Smith's creation appearing in a Robert E. Howard story and then that one somehow making its way into Lovecraft's story. And then you also have the origin story of the Hounds of Tindalos by Frank Belknap Long. These things I remember being mentioned in the Arkham Horror board game and I was wondering where the hell did Lovecraft write about these things. I spent like a month going through all the stories trying to see where it came from but actually it was this guy who wrote it. So anyway this book is like if Lovecraft and his buddies all met up in a log cabin somewhere and decided to have themselves a writing party for a week and this was the result. Get this if you've read Lovecraft's stories a million times over and you know them off by heart, but you want something more, but still very similar in style. That is exactly what this book is about, and that is exactly why it's so great. Anyway, cheers. <laughs>